is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 nissan altima courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this has been refreshed for the 2023 model year several changes including new looks new colors new wheels there's interior changes and there's new safety features and a whole lot more so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 nissan altima first one being the s starting at twenty five thousand two hundred ninety dollars that is a front wheel drive configuration only sv for twenty six thousand ninety dollars sr which is the one we are in today starting at twenty seven thousand four hundred ninety dollars sl for thirty one thousand nine hundred ninety and lastly the srvc turbo for thirty four thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars so for the first trim level, the S and the VC Turbo, those are gonna be front wheel drive only, but you actually can get all wheel drive at any of the other trim levels. If you wanted to do that, simply add $1,500 then to any of those prices. But as you can imagine with all of those trim levels, there are two different power plants available for the Altima. First one is going to belong to all the trim levels, but the VC Turbo, obviously. So that power plant is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 188 horsepower for the front wheel drive, 180 two then for the all-wheel drive 180 pound feet of torque for the front wheel drive 178 then for the all-wheel drive and again power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.4 seconds it's actually pretty impressive for its class and mpg numbers coming in at 27 in the city 39 on the highway for the front wheel drive that's very impressive 26 in the city 36 on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration of course belonging to the srvc turbo that that one is powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 248 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters. Zero to 60 town for that one, approximately 5.8 seconds. That's nuts. With MPG numbers coming in at 25 in the city, 34 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel with a slight power loss, but if you want those numbers I just gave you, it does take premium unleaded fuel then. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our Altima, I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode. It is singular. There is a sport driving mode and it is hidden. Essentially, it is just the horizontal line located just below the shifter here. So if you press that, it's going to automatically kind of hold the RPMs in a much higher level. It's going to adjust throttle response there as well, but not the steering sensitivity, but the other two, yes. But now that we got all that out of the way, what do you guys I say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put a paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one up to speed and let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right so just for you guys' information before we do this test here when you push that sport driving mode it is going to display a little s up on the digital portion of the gauges here to let you know you are in that sport driving mode so do want to mention that first now let's go ahead and find that straightaway and let's give this a shot all right it's holding kind of a first gear here that's nice go All right, that is not bad. Paddle shifters are freaking quick. Keep in mind, it's a CVT. It's continuously variable transmission. So technically, you're not really shifting through gears. It's kind of simulated shifting, so to speak. But having said that, the acceleration was pretty darn quick and the paddle shifters kind of imitated an automatic pretty darn good and it was pretty darn quick as well. So yes, I was a big fan of the paddle shifters and the acceleration here in our Altima without a doubt. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.7 inch ventilated front disc and the back 11.5 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that's going to come in at a pretty impressive 120 feet. And so far, braking feel my short test drive here, it's been 100% perfectly fine. So definitely not gonna have any issues there. Touching on suspension and handling, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension up front. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And if you were to go with one of those SR trim levels, you're actually also going to get a sport tuned suspension. So 
little better handling with that one and actually touching on the steering feel right off the bat instantly points you in the direction that you want to go so i'm a big fan of that it's weighted on the heavier side of things so definitely a fan of the steering feel in our sr trim level that we have with us here today as far as our eye quality goes you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road with the sr trim level because you got that sport tune suspension i think i remember that in previous years of testing this thing out as well but I guess that's the trade-off. Little better handling, little less ride quality, but if you want a better ride quality, just don't go with the SR. I'll just put it that way. And touching on cabin noise, I'm going 30 miles per hour. It isn't all that bad. Honestly, it's perfectly fine for me. I will say, listen, turn signals are pretty ridiculously loud. Take a listen. A lot louder than I'm used to. I'll just put it that way. Something I didn't expect, so that was kind of interesting. But anyways, then touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. So that is definitely not gonna be any issues there. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Nissan Altima. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Nissan Altima, finished in black, of course, definitely. I think every the car looks good in black, but let me actually go over the two new colors for 2023 since I mentioned it. Gray Sky Pearl is one of them. Garnet Pearl Metallic is the second. So two new color options for the 2023 Altima. And again, completely redesigned front end. Let's go ahead and start up front. Of course, you're going to have a chrome V-Motion front grille with active grille shutters or a black V-Motion front grille if you were to go with the SR trim. Active grille shutters, meaning the grille shutters are going to open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. But of course, you got that SR badging found in the front grille as well. If you were to go with one of those SR trim levels, that definitely looks good. I feel like it's in a different font than previous years as well. I definitely don't recognize the font of that SR badging, but not that it's really a big deal. But anyways, LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board. And that's a big deal because in 2022, previously halogens came standard on the Altima. So I did want to emphasize that because now you get better illumination for 2023 at night. So big deal there. LED daytime running lights, of course, coming standard as well. Automatic feature as well. And all trim levels also give you automatic high beams, meaning when you have your high beams on at night, it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. It's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bump it back up to high beams. So a very nice convenience feature there and a safety feature as well. So don't see any front air curtains to the side. Sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't. But overall, I do like the slight refreshed look for 2023. And I love that SR badging up front as well. And as always, that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. So now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the Altima here, you're either going to get black or chrome belt line molding. Again, depending upon the trim level that you go with. Floating roof line towards the back, although it's gonna be hard to tell because we have a black exterior, but typically that floating roof line is of course gonna be finished in black though. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors, but they will be gloss black if you were to go with one of the SR trims. Again, you're not gonna be able to tell because we've got the black exterior, but gloss black side mirrors regardless of color if you go with one of the SR trims though. LED integrated turret signals then coming with the SL and VC turbo trim levels. So therefore that is why we do not have the integrated turret signals in those mirrors today. But then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers are gonna come standard. 17 inch machine finished aluminum alloys for the SV, 19 inch machine finished aluminum alloys then for the SR trims and the SL. And cool thing about the wheels this year, like I said at the beginning of the video, they are new designs and every single trim level gives you a different design than the other. So that is one of the cool things. You're gonna be uh, kind of easily able to distinguish between the trim levels just simply by looking at the wheels. At least if you got pretty darn familiar with the Altima. So I do like the wheel design, it's different. So anyways, pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Altima. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top. Rear spoiler is going to come standard on the SR trim levels. If you wanted that, that's how you're gonna get it body colored or gloss black rear diffuser down below and that definitely looks pretty darn good you do have the trim level badging found on the right hand portion there in that new sr font as i was mentioning to you guys and then just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips they look dang good down there on the sides of that rear diffuser but as always i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here is that exhaust clip <laughs> 
been tipping out since we are around to the back of the Ultima here. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, there's several different ways to go ahead to do that. There's a button on the key fob, there's a button on the trunk itself, and there is actually a button on the, uh, kind of by the driver's side left knee when you're sitting in the driver's seat then as well. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.4 cubic feet, which is actually pretty darn impressive there. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there, but what really impressed me was all the grocery bag hooks, which you typically don't even find on sedans, let alone, you know, usually you might have one, if that, but you got like four of them here in the Altima. So there's some tie down anchors kind of in the back corners, but if you flip them around, they can serve as grocery bag hooks. And then there's some grocery bag hooks that kind of hang down from up top. That is a bunch of more grocery bag hooks right there as well. So kind of surprised to see all that. So that was pretty darn cool. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you're gonna find the spare tire. So if you're curious whether you got a fix a flat or a spare tire, it's gonna be the spare tire, which I personally prefer. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 35.2 inches for reference. I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation is going to come on the SL and VC turbo trim level. So we don't have it today, unfortunately. But what we do have for the SV trim level up is rear charging ports. You got one of the little ones and one of the regular size ones. So that is pretty darn cool. And there is also rear center armrest with cup holders that does come standard across the board. So then make your way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming standard with the S. Eight-way power driver's seat for the SV trim level and up. You're gonna get a sport cloth for the SR trims. That's at least comes standard. Four-way power adjustable lumbar support for the SL and VC turbo. Leather seating then for the SL. Heated front seats then for the SL and VC turbo. We actually have an SR premium package. It goes for $2,890. That gives us a bunch of extras as well, including these leather seats with this orange contrast stitching, and they are incredibly comfortable. The power lumbar support was definitely very nice as well. So overall, seat comfort was plenty fine. Definitely didn't have any issues with finding my perfect driving position. That's due in part as well because of the steering wheel. So let's get into the steering wheel a little bit. It is tilt and telescoping and it telescopes out ridiculously far. That isn't always the case. So I do wanna emphasize that. So for a taller individual, that is a very good thing to help you find that perfect driving position. Heated steering wheel is gonna come on the SL and VC turbo and leather wrap then for the SR trim level end up. But then making our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Nissan logo all the way to the top. Lock, unlock the button to pop the rear trunk and then the circular button that is going to be your remote start, which comes standard on every single trim level across the board so you can warm up the Altima on super cold days here in Frederick because it does happen. But anyways, it is all keyless entry with the push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, tachometers all the way to your left, speedometers all the way to your right. And there is a fairly decent sized digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are some steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. And through that, you're able to see things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There is a digital speedometer it's going to tell you your outside temperature as well your miles per gallon that you're getting at any given time there's a nice little compass up there and uh, you can actually check out some weather information apparently when you need your next oil change as well. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in the digital portion of the gauges then. Then make your way to overall interior quality. Power moonroof is going to come in the SL VC turbo and it's gonna be optional on the other trims like we have today. Overhead sunglass holder is also going to come standard on the Altima. Dual zoom climate control for the SL and VC turbo trim levels. You're gonna get some wood trim if you were to go with that SL trim level. However, you kind of have this this black-ish kind of gloss black carbon fiber-ish look if you go with the SRs and I'm a big fan of that actually just above the passenger side glove box it continues just below the air vents there up front but wireless fan charger then is going to come on the SL and VC turbo it is optional on the SR we do have that that is located just in front of the shifter and also just in front of the shifter going to get 12 volt power outlet USB charging port and then another smaller USB charging port there to the right of the shifter you got your dual cup holders a little bit of storage and then a center armrest it's actually a decent amount of storage in there. And I like the orange contrast stitching on the armrest itself as well. And that's continued onto the doors and the seats, like I was saying. So overall, the orange contrast stitching really sets it off here in our SR trim level. So I am a big fan, but I actually don't mind the interior quality. Like they had a lot of places they could have kept things like a matte, cheap black plastic, but they didn't. Like around the cup holders, they finished in gloss black, for example. A lot of other manufacturers will put a cheaper black plastic there. So 
I don't mind the interior quality personally, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen because we have a massive infotainment screen here for the 2023 Altima. Let me start with seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the S, eight inch color touchscreen display for the SV, SR, and SL. And then the VC Turbo is going to give you a massive 12.3 inch color touchscreen display that's gonna be optional on some of the other trims like we have today. So this is a gigantic infotainment screen in horizontal format. I absolutely love it. Bluetooth and audio streaming, you're gonna get that either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well, which is gonna be wireless on the SL and VC turbo trim level. So that is pretty darn cool. Factory navigation system coming with the SL and VC turbo. You can check out your driving information up there as well. You can check out your weather information. You can check out fuel information. Uh, it actually gives you the lowest fuel price information nearby that's pretty cool you got Alexa capability up there as well and it looks like you can really customize it and make it your own you can kind of use different apps and display them where you like so that is pretty cool and of course you can check out your radio information up there of course so when it comes to the sound systems you will get six speakers for the S SV and SR trim levels, and then a nine speaker Bose sound system for the SL and VC turbo. So having said that, we actually do have the six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. I say this every time I test out a Nissan or Infiniti vehicle. The bass that they put in these vehicles is insane. That's six speakers. That is one of the better six speaker sound systems I typically hear just because the bass is ridiculous. Clarity was plenty fine as well. Personally, for me, that sound system is definitely perfectly fine. Now, I will say I've had the Bose sound system in my Infiniti G35 Coupe back in the day, and that was 100% on point as well. It never broke on me or anything like that. Bose is a very reputable company, so really, Either sound system that you go with, it's gonna be on point is what I'm trying to get at here. So anyways, last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Altima in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board, but there is also a 360 degree monitor or surround view monitor that's gonna come standard on the SL and VC turbo trim level as well, which is gonna let you know what is completely all around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Altima is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side current airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, reverse automatic braking and rear parking sensors as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ultima i do like the refresh specifically the new wheel designs that they've included like every single wheel design is different and it's unique it's not like any other wheel design that you really see out there on the road right now which is why i personally am a big fan of them Great safety as well, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. It doesn't get any better than that safety rating by IIHS. I do love the all-wheel drive availability as well. There's still a lot of sedans out there that it competes with that don't get that, like the Hyundai Sonata, for example, or the Honda Accord. So that is definitely a big win as well. The only room for improvement I can honestly think of, well, I'll say two things, I guess, but a full digital gauge cluster would certainly be nice in the Altima. And I know Nissan can do it because they put it in some of their other vehicles like the Nissan Rogue, for example. And I think ambient lighting would look pretty darn good in this thing as well, because I know other vehicles like the Kia K5 and the Hyundai Sonata can get 64 colors of ambient lighting. So I wouldn't mind seeing that in the Altima there as well. So overall, let me know what you guys think of the Altima in the comments section below. I love reading your comments. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.